Okay, let's take a look at our next word problem together. So here we're given a right circular cylinder, and we're told that it has a radius of 6 inches and a volume of 144 pi cubic inches. And the question is, how high is it? How high is it? So the first question that you should be asking, sort of the, the preamble question, is what in the world is a right circular cylinder? Well, it turns out you see these things all the time. If you ever have a tuna fish can or you ever have a can of soda, all those things are right circular cylinders. Here's some other examples. But if you ever buy bologna in bulk, in case you like sandwiches and you're not a vegetarian. Okay, so this is a right circular cylinder. It's basically a cylinder which is right, meaning that it's, it's, it's not tilted, like it's not sort of you know, skewed like this, you see? It's right like this. Um, Sometimes you may buy a big chunk of cheese. Like this is a little baby jack. Oh, it's a baby, it's so cute. I remember it was a little teeny thing. Oh, look, it's a, okay. anyway. Um, these things are all right circular cylinders. In fact, here's a really, I'm gonna show you a really great example of right circular cylinder. This is in fact, probably my favorite example. Boston cream pie. Can you see that? That is a circle on top and you can see that in fact, that is a right circular cylinder. Can you see that? that is a, and it's a very tasty one too. Anyway. So we're given this right circular cylinder. So let's change the problem, in fact, to suppose you're given a Boston cream pie, okay? And you're told that its radius is six inches, and so that's sort of what this is, six inches in a way, sort of. And um, you're told what the volume is. Now, how do you find the volume of a cylinder, right? So we need the formula for volume in terms of, in terms of the radius so, uh, and, and the height. So what is volume? Well, well, you might actually either memorize the formula or someone told you the formula, which is that the volume the formula for volume is pi, that number, 3.14, so forth, that comes up with circles, r squared times h. Now that's the formula for volume, but let me tell you that you shouldn't memorize that, you should think about it. h here represents the height of the, of the cake in this case, so that's this measure right here. That's the height. In fact, if I draw one, maybe I'll just draw one right here just so you can sort of see it in perspective. So there's a cake. It doesn't look much like a cake. It's sort of too long, but I'm trying to exaggerate this. This I'm going to call the height and the radius, of course. You know what that is. That's this distance right from here to here. That's the radius. Okay, but the way to see that formula and the way to actually understand that formula is to think about the bologna again. In fact, let me take the bologna really fast and see if I can open it up. I hope it's not too juicy. It's nice bologna is really juicy. You know, if you think about it, a cylinder is just a thickened circle. And when you think about it, what's the area for a circle? Well, that's pi r squared. And, and, and you may just know that fact. Ooh, this is really gooey, folks. Okay, so in fact, if I just gave you a circle, okay, the area of that is pi r squared. Well, now you want to take sort of that area, but put it together with, you know, this area and this area, and what I'm doing basically is thinking about taking the cylinder and slicing it into a whole bunch of pieces. And so if I know the area for each slice, then how do I get the volume of the whole thing? I just multiply by how high it is. So in fact, if you just think about the, the round bologna, you can always remember the volume for a right uh, cylinder. It's just the area, which is pi r squared, multiplied by the height. Just think of it like slicing bologna. It's that easy. Okay, so. There's the formula, and what do we know? Well, we know, first of all, what the radius is. The radius is 6, 6 inches. So if we now put in, boy, that is, don't, if you're going to compute the volume of bologna, by the way. But now my hands smell like bologna. Okay, here we go. So let's move this up here. What I see here is the following. Uh, the volume, which I'm told is 144 times pi. Well, that's the volume. Now, what does it equal? It equals pi times r squared. Now r, we're told, is 6. So r squared would be 36 times h. And now the question is, what is h? That, what is the height? Well, you see, there's the equation that we need to solve. And notice how simple that is. But again, the hard part was actually coming up with the equation. Well, notice that I can divide both sides by uh, pi times 36. I'll write 36 pi here, so they line up. And you can see there's a lot of cancellation. First of all, the pies cancel. Oh, no, no joke about my Boston cream pie, please. And then, in fact, I can do, I can divide thir um, 36 into 144, and I'd see that h would be 4 inches.
And so the height, this is a very high Boston cream pie, because the height of this is four inches. Now, uh, you may be wondering, by the way, there's a bonus question with this. And the bonus question is, how many props can Professor Berger eat? Oh, man, look at that. Oof. Can you see that? Not pretty. Let's just take a piece of this. You know, and the reason why I want to do this is for pedagogy and pedagogy only. You know, the truth is that the volume will change if I take a piece away. And let me demonstrate that with a little example here. Suppose that I take a piece of this. Don't you wish that you, don't you wish that cyberspace was actually real space? Because then you'd be able to actually partake in this. Let's see how this goes. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That is good. Who made, did someone make this? No. Anyway, so you can see that math really has the power to taste good. By setting up the volume, figuring it out using bologna, which I'm not going to eat, and then just solving a simple equation, we can actually find out that this delicious Boston cream pie should be four inches high. It's delicious. Anyway, I'll see you at our next stop.